it doesn't do any good for the the president to say, well, we're the United States, we're the strongest power. I'm quoting him verbatim in the history of civilization. That doesn't mean anything unless you are. And when you look at the $50 billion, a lot of it was small arms, but nevertheless, $50 billion in equipment we threw away in Afghanistan, or I should say handed over the Taliban. And then you see the $120 billion of munitions we're giving to Ukraine, and a lot of the stuff is off the books as far as economic support or other types of aid that's not really spoken about. And then you see what we're going to have to give Israel, although they're not, I mean, we're giving Israel air power munitions and we're giving Ukraine more ground power munitions. Maybe they overlap, maybe they don't. And then when you see what China's saying about uh, Taiwan, and then you look at the fact that we're $33 trillion in debt. And all I can say is that after COVID and after the George Floyd and the woke movement, we decided we were going to defund the police and defund the Pentagon. So we, we actually cut in real dollars the Pentagon, and we, you, we borrowed enormous amounts of money to redistribute, lavish. Most of it was ill-spent, and we're in a terrible financial situation, and uh, we're, we're under arm given our commitments. In other words, our strategic commitments way outweigh our wherewithal. That being said, the history of this country, if you look at 1917 or 1941, we were more ill-prepared to meet those strategic debt demands than we are now. And it all hinges on at what point does this traditional American light click on that says, this is an existential period and you've got to now rearm to the teeth and you've got to change and you've got, and I can see that coming. And I think this country is very lax. It's a very strange country, as you know. But when it finally gets in its head, it has enormous powers of productivity. Its, it's labor participation rate is way under what it could be. There's a lot of labor that's not being used. There's a lot of capital that's not being invested in where it could be invested very quickly. And we could really ramp up very quickly if we wanted to. And I think we're going to do that. And I think there's a sense now that woke is over with, the George Floyd is over with, the COVID lockdown is over with, it, none of it worked. And it's time to get back to looking at taking a hard look at our universities, our educational system, going back to assimilation, integration of different types of uh, ethnic groups and closing the border and, you know, stepping back into reality rather than this two or three year fantasy. And I think someone who's 70 years old now and watched the United States, it still has that ability to recover and react very quickly. And it always amazes me when it really wants to do something. And the, the amount of talent we have here and wealth, if we really want to do it. And something usually sets it off. If Hamas or Hezbollah or Iran do something like they did on October 7th, involving either hostages or Americans or Israelis again, I think it'll set this country off. I really do. And I think we're already on that pathway anyway. I don't see anybody in the political realm who's saying we, 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 we can't spend this money. Everybody's talking about, I'm going to spend more money in defense than you. Or everybody's trying to say, uh, we're going to have to address the immigration problem. We're going to have to address the university problem. And I mean that from both sides of the aisle. I can't believe what the New York Times and CNN have been writing. I mean, it sounds like for a brief moment in their existence, they believe in America again, and they believe in deterrence, and they believe that the Arab world suffers from endemic anti-Semitism. And I don't, that's contrary to the whole woke DEI doctrine and gospel. 